Okay, so we're starting in on the box cleanup here, and what I'm doing right now is taking off all of the fittings, and I'm going to clean them in ultrasonic cleaner with some, uh, just basically some simple green, some degreaser. Now, everything is screwed on except for the front lock, the handle up top, and the two hinges. Those three things are, are put in with these little little rivets here. They're kind of like, they're like a split rivet and they fold it in the back. I'll show you how to get those off after. And we'll also see about getting these tags off. Now, the other thing I need to do too is I'm taking all the metal fittings off and I'm taking these drawer handles off. For whatever reason, these were originally nickel finished and it looks like somebody kind of painted them with some gold paint. This is just flaking off. So the symbol green should, and some hot water should kind of take that off. Um, I want to take this off, this front cover off, just so I don't damage this sticker. So what you can do is just take out the bottom drawers here. <clears throat> also, if you're ever in doubt of whether a box is a Gerstner or not, it'll say it on the hinges, and it'll also say it stamped in here. And in here, there's a number, a handwritten number. It'll be usually written in pencils. It says W400. The back of all the drawers, the numbers will match that number on the box. This particular box, these two drawers here, that says 343, are a different number. So these are probably replacement drawers, but they fit in there fine. So to get this off, what you can usually do is kind of just lift it up, cock, cock it at an angle, and the pins should come out of the track, and it should come right off. All right, so I'm going to take this off. I just want to kind of put this away just so I don't scratch the living crap out of the sticker while we're cleaning it up. Okay, so this is what holds the front latch, the key latch, and the hinges and the handle on. Let me zoom in for you here. And what they are are little domed rivets on the other side, and they're split in the middle. They come through, and then they split them and fold them over. So you're going to have to get in here and actually dig them out. Okay, so this tack pull has been working out really well for me. Uh, you just got to be careful because when you miss, uh, you know, your fingers are right in the way that you're missing. So let me just show you how this works. You can see these two pieces that are folded over here. So just take one edge, kind of slip it under, and you'll be able to lift the tab. You're going to score some wood, but it's going to be on the inside. It's covered by felt anyway. And then you can get the other side up. And then what I've been taking is a pair of kind of pointy needle nose here. Squeezing them together. And then you zoom you out. Whoop, that's in, not out. Then you come around to the head side. And you should be able to get the tack puller right under there. And when you run out of room, leverage. And there it is. So what we have here is um, a small ultrasonic cleaner. This is actually from Harbor Freight. It's one of Harbor Freight's really good buys. So if you need one, get yourself a 20% off coupon. Buy this thing. It works excellent for the price. What we have in here right now is a 50-50 solution of Simple Green and Smoke and Hot Water. All the screws, all the small pieces are in a glass container that's in there. And everything else is in there. We're going to kind of clean all the nasties off of it. Now, there is some rust on these. Some of it might come off, some of it might not. I will kind of say be careful with using a de-rusting solution like Evaporust or something like that. Inside all these swinging pots, these clasps, is a piece of spring steel. Uh, I've had problems with de-rusting solution and spring steels turning those springs brittle. Uh, Gerstner does have replacements for these that you can fit in, but you don't want to go through that trouble if you don't have to. So if you do need some de-rusting after the fact, uh, you may just want to do some steel wool or something like that. We'll get to that once we get there. Now, these were at one point nickel plated. You can see the nickel is pretty much intact on the back, but on the front, not so much. So we're going to let these uh, hang out in here and do their thing and see how much stuff comes off. Okay, so I managed to remove all the tags and they're all intact. And what was holding those on was 
drive screws. So I just used my tack puller and got those off there. So now we're working on the one thing I was worried about, and it's actually working out better than I thought. So let me show you. Okay, so this is the one thing I was worried about losing. And I have a brand new utility knife blade here, and I can just slip it behind there and just give it a quick little kind of a sawing action here while gently pulling up. And that seems to be working really well. Most of the sticky stuff is staying on the wood, which is actually good, meaning that I can kind of put this on something and it won't stick to it. And then put like put it back with some double-sided tape on the back. Um, this seems to be working out pretty good. Almost like I'm just shaving that layer of uh, glue right off of it. almost there now's the time you don't want to get ahead of yourself because you know right when you're at that last second is when you screw up and ruin it so let's keep doing what we're doing slowly making progress And there we go. And we're 100% intact. Look at that. I'll be damned. So what I can do right now is I got a little piece of aluminum. And that, that's actually got dust on it, which is a good thing. And we'll just lightly stick it there. Any other little stickies will hold the dust. And there you go. Put this for storage. I can take it right off again. We'll store this in a nice, clean spot. And, uh... Wait until we have to put it back on. So there's a couple of little bubbles there. Might be able to get out. And these were original, obviously. Just from being on the box. And little pieces of dirt stuck under there. Here and there. Alright, you know what? They were, they've been under there for since the 60s. They're going to stay under there. You kind of got to know when to get off the horse. So there we go. We saved our sticker. Now we can pretty much refinish and do whatever we got to do. Okay, sorry about the noise in the background, but I kind of went over this with some cleaner and basically soft scrub sponge. And a lot of this finish is gone, and a lot of this won't come off. Ignore all this here. So then you see all what came off. So we're going to make an executive decision. And I have some cabinet scrapers, and I burnished the hook on these to about a two degree angle. And I'm gonna scrape all this finish, and we'll get this leaven off. And we're gonna go the whole bore with this box. I'm gonna refinish the whole thing. So we're gonna level all this off, get all this old stuff off, and let me just butt it up against something nice here. You can see I'm going really light. I mean, if I really, if I push down. These are raisin chips, you can see the curly cues. Um, you want the cabinet scraper to raise a chip, you don't want it to burnish the wood. Uh, you don't want sawdust. So I'm gonna get this all cleaned up and all this sanded down and we're gonna refinish this entire box. Uh, I think that's the best way we're gonna do this. That's that, or I've decided that's the way I wanna do it. Some of you may scoff at it, but that's definitely the way I wanna go. So. You guys get to skip all of the uh, annoying part, and I get to do all the annoying part. Mm. 
Okay, so I got all the hardware cleaned up. So it came out pr fairly well. Uh, this is from the soak in the Simple Green and the Sonic Cleaner. And then I went upstairs to rinse it off in my sink and just took a Brillo pad and just went over it real quick and this is how everything came out. So you can see we do have some pitting in there. And what came out the nicest were the hinges because those really don't get worn. So you can see the original nickel finish there, what it's supposed to look like. Fairly nice. And some of, so this is probably the largest piece here. You can see, if I zoom in, it's kind of hard for me to see through the viewfinder of the camera. but So you can see some of the nickel is still there. A lot of it is worn off. But what we're going to do is we are just going to buff the living crap out of these. Um, again, the things like the clasps have a spring built into the top, so I would be hesitant to use some sort of evaporous like product on there because that tends to affect spring steel. Also, if you have one that's broken, there are replacement kits you can buy from Gerstner to replace just the spring. So what we're gonna do here, what I have right here on this is just a sisal wheel and a denim wheel. So all that heavy pitting will be able to polish out mostly with this sisal wheel we'll move over to the denim wheel to smooth it out and then we have a uh, cotton wheel that we'll use for a final buff with the uh, green uh, stuff here or the brown stuff I think that's fine I can't remember which one's fine which was medium I'll have to look but by the way yes I am wearing gloves these are just regular surgical gloves uh, this is a Harbor Freight little third horse or buffer they work great um, if you get this sucked in it's just gonna tear it it's not gonna hurt your hands I wouldn't use anything like a like a like a welding glove or anything that'll kind of catch if you get anything if this catches this is gonna tear plus this is a tiny little buffer uh, you know this isn't crazy industrial type. okay we're gonna start off with something that's uh, relatively dull you're gonna be using I got I have a package, I found a package of the, these Ryobi uh, metal cleaners. These actually work re really well. I'm using the medium one right now. And we're gonna take something that's relatively dull here. Take the corner here, and then we'll go on the sister wheel. So that's actually looking pretty good. Usually the cotton wheel on the final buff will take out some fine scratches around the edges. I mean, it's never gonna be perfect, but you can see the difference there. Get the screws. It's a parallel jaw pliers. These things work great for holding that, and they also have a groove in the bottom, so you can just put the middle of the screw in there, face the slot up. And there you go. 
nice shiny screw head.